Three weeks ago, I launched my 12th design portfolio in the 14 years I've been a designer. Yep, that's nearly one design portfolio every single year since I was 16 years old. Now, within the three weeks of tracking its performance, it's already doing 60% better across the board than my previous design portfolio. So there are three questions that I wanna answer in this video. Why do I launch a new design portfolio every single year? What did I do to garner a better performing design portfolio that you can learn from? And ultimately, am I happy with the new outcome? Hi, my name is Mizko and I'm the founder of The Design Ship where I teach designers how to become legendary. Now, ever since I was 16 years old, I have been obsessed with learning how to design and code websites and web apps. There has always been something special about turning an idea into a reality. I genuinely believe that deep down in us all, we all yearn to be recognized. Some find it through writing, crafting physical products, but for me, it just so happened to be building websites and apps. Now, when I first entered the industry back in 2008, redesigning and rebuilding my portfolio was a way for me to learn new skills, experiment with new ideas, and really refine my craft and really just grow as a designer. However, as of late, since I have been so busy running my own businesses for the last six years, I haven't really spent enough time or effort in redesigns. And because of that, I realized the quality of the redesigns of my portfolio have dropped tremendously. I went from designing and coding custom animations and narratives with JavaScript to simply slapping a few words on a page without much thought. And I had become so focused on my business and the numbers that I really lost touch with the creative world. So on the 8th of Feb, 2022, I decided to launch an entirely new design portfolio for the new year. As I still had multiple businesses running, I gave myself a strict two week deadline. However, within the two weeks, I would be purely focused on my portfolio and I put everything else on a pause. So this is the redesign. All right, so we're now in the original Figma design file. Now I'm gonna walk you through the thought process and the rationale behind the designs and then we'll jump into the actual website. So when I first started, I told myself two weeks. That was all I had, two weeks full time. So it wasn't enough time to actually go through a full rebrand where I talk about my values, my mission statement and all that good stuff. I went straight into just finding different websites that I found inspiration from. So we've got a few websites over here. I don't remember what they were called or the URLs. I, I, I'm sorry, but I did like this website because this developer had actually created all these widgets on his website that you can move around. And I really loved this because it was familiar to designers and developers. So we've got the bit of some Mac OS sort of notifications up here. He's got these windows and they're all sort of brought them back to who he was, right? And he also had this nice navigator in the top left corner where you could actually like zoom and sort of move around the web page based on this control. And he's got some um, case studies, a bit about himself. So I really liked this website, mainly because it was quite unique. And I obviously took some inspiration from them. As you scroll further down, I did like the vibe and the actual design. It was very, I'm, I'm a type of person who likes contrasting colors. I'm less of the matte looking color palette. I'm definitely about the sort of the fluoros, the bright colors, um, the high contrast. I just feel like that represents me a little bit better. Um, so I definitely like this, even though I didn't really draw too much inspiration from it. It was just something I placed down on the web page uh, in this file. Um, I definitely did like the topography up here, as you can see. Um, so this one was mainly just around topography layouts, uh, nothing too special. Then we've got MDS. That was really just the boldness of his font. Um, so that's from Matt. And then if you scroll further down, we've got, uh, I don't remember which one this was, but it had some nice interactions. Um, it was very simple. So mainly about the simplicity. Didn't really take uh, take any inspiration away from this one. I don't remember what this was about. Um, black icons, these look very nice, um, very clean as well. I'm not sure why I pasted this down. Um, then obviously we've got Dan Petty's website. Uh, I, well, I didn't take too much away from this one. I just screenshot it because it was dark. It looked nice, but there wasn't too much I, I really took away from it. Um, obviously this website, Dan Petty, once again, he, he did have 3D renders, which sort of did sort of uh, solidify my idea or like my want to 
actually have a 3D render. The 3D render actually came from NFTs. That's where I sort of saw it and that's where I drew, drew inspiration from. But seeing that um, how Dan sort of executed his definitely sort of gave me a little bit more inspiration as well. So moving over to the right hand side, we've got one more design over here. I really did love the design of this website. It just felt very me. Um, it's high contrast. It's sort of very bold, um, very abrupt. I like this type of design. It's very in your face. That's just who I am. And that's just, I feel like represents me. Even though I didn't draw too much uh, inspiration from it once again, I would have liked to um, if I had more time, but two weeks was a, was a very short period of time to actually design and build an entire website. But I did like the the hand um, the hand writing contrasted with like the serif fonts. I felt like that was very me. So moving over onto the design when it first got started, I actually just took a screenshot of one of my YouTube videos and I pasted it down onto this web page, and then I pretty much just hand drew all the hand, like all the drawings. So I wanted to understand if I was to turn myself into a 3D render and my little studio here, what would it look like? So I started to sketch out what it would look like. And then I actually had a Ben bring to uh, bring life into like just the head, just so I could see and retrofit this into a, a mock-up and see what could this look like if I was to actually turn this entire studio into a 3D render. And you can see already, I'm sort of bringing through the files of like a Mac OS file. We've got a bit of the, a Mac OS like header. We've got a bit of a, a drop down over here. And I was just trying to piece together what this web page could look like. So I was just really moving quite quickly. Then over on this side, you can see it starts to come to life a little, a little bit more. I'm starting to work with a little bit more mid uh, fidelity copy. So like what I what content I will, I will actually have. Um, you can see I've got a bit of the files, I've got definitely more of a render here and I'm still playing around with like what this could look like, but I felt like I was fairly happy with where this was heading. This was already sort of uh, halfway through the first week. And then this was by the end of the first week. So I had like fleshed out what the uh, navigation would look like, um, all these notifications, what they would look like for larger monitors. Um, the copy as well and you can see I've started to blur and add shadows in just to like really uh, Polish up this design and try to imagine what that would actually look like in real life or, or on a website So you can see I've got, got some of the content and then from there I pretty much designed out all the different pages and then we I started to jump into Webflow and I started to build up the actual website so if I head over to Chrome you can see we then have some animations and I would love to animate this dude or me, AKA me up, but there is a little issue in terms of absolute positioning that I need to fix. But we've got a bit of a nav navigation up here. Um, we've got some of the notifications over here. So they click off to my YouTube channel, which is great. And then it clicks off onto uh, my, contact, my contact page and then clicks off onto my newsletter. You can also hide the notifications as well. And then as you scroll down, we have the featured in, we also have a big image of myself, a bit of social proof, and then we'll have a big blurb about me because I really wanted to focus on telling the story. So once again, telling the narrative of who I am, where where I've come from, how do I get to where I am today? So once again, if you don't have a story, you don't have a narrative on your website, people don't know who you are. There are so many bypasses online that you just need to tell your story because if you don't, then no one will actually know. So then scroll further down, I've got a bit of my success stories, which will ultimately link to case studies. But once again, I just don't have time to write up uh, case studies, to be honest. Educational videos as well. And then we have services and offerings. And then we have a sort of like an infinite loop of all my clients. Um, and that will link off to the testimonial page. And then we have a juicy, juicy footer over here. So if we scroll further up, you can see, oh yeah, once again, there's a parallax on that hero section. Now cl click onto courses that will load in my, my design system at the design ship and also my Figma masterclass. I'll be adding all the courses uh, into the future, all into this website. So if you click onto more, it will take you to the design ship website. Then we have case studies and there's a lot of coming soon case studies. Um, I don't know when I'll have time to write them, but I really don't really need to write case studies anymore. So that's why I'm a, a little bit reluctant. But I do have one. But this isn't a case study, guys. So please don't draw inspiration from this. 
It's not how I would write my case study for my portfolio, but really this was written many, many years ago. I think like five years ago. So I just copy and pasted this over to my website, but definitely not, I don't use this as inspiration. Um, but obviously I have a link to the live website and also the company page as well. Then on the third page, we have testimonials. So here's just a big dump of all the testimonials um, and the companies that I've worked with before. Um, and there's obviously more. Then we have a services page. So we have a breakdown of the different services that I provide. Ultimately, if I had more time, I would want to write individual uh, pages for each service. Um, that's for SEO, but also helps people understand what is user research and testing, what comes with it, what projects have I worked on, what some of these insights and really give a more detailed breakdown of each of these services. Then we have newsletter. As you can see, very simple. You have a big CT at the top. A um, bit of social proof over here as well, 11,400 readers with an open rate of 41%. And then we've got a few testimonials. And if you click on see all reviews, that is everyone that has tweeted about my newsletter um, before on Twitter. So that's pretty cool. And then we have about, that is the second last page. And you can see new photo of me, new year, new me with a big yellow, fluoro yellow uh, hoodie. Then we've got beliefs and values, tools and equipment. So I've tried to break down as much as I can and share as much as I can um, to people who are uh, coming by and learning a little bit more about me. Talks and partnerships and sponsorships. So obviously, wherever you can, try to social proof yourself. Once again, I try to do this because a lot of students, they want to make sure if they're going to buy a course or if they're following me for my education material, I need to be put my best foot forward. I need to let people know that, yes, I've worked with great companies like Adobe and Microsoft. I've done uh, partnerships with them. I've done partnerships with other digital products that you probably might have used, Protopie and Zeppelin. And I've done a lot of talks as well. I've been sharing my journey for many, many years. This is the story that I'm trying to tell as well. This is what helps you build a, a stronger online personal brand. And then obviously I have clients and uh, clients in their words and that takes you back to the testimonials. Then in the top right corner, the last link we have is the contact page. And once again, very simple um, contact form. And then we have what my clients have said. And that's pretty much it. That's just a bit of a uh, bit more social proof as well. So this was all built in Webflow and it took about one week for me to do it. So if I do uh, resize this, this is all responsive. Um, took a little bit more time than expected. I wanted to smash it out in three, around three days, but Obviously, getting the responsiveness and everything took a little bit more time. So that was the redesign, but now let's see what the data actually has to say about the new design portfolio. So here we have Google Analytics, and I have been using Google Analytics to track my personal portfolio for the last 10 or so years. So what I've got over here is that I've got Feb 8th to Feb 26th, which is today, the recording of this video. That's around three weeks worth of time, which is when I first launched my new design portfolio. Then I'm also comparing it back to 2021 in April on the 24th to the 12th of May. That was the first three weeks when I had launched my previous design portfolio. And as you can see across the entire board, the metrics are greener than this leaf over here. This shows that everything that I've done with this new design portfolio has given it an uplift, has improved for the better. So we can see that overall, there's a lot more users, a lot more visits because probably when I promoted it and I spoke about it, people were intrigued by the new 3D render. They thought it was a little bit different, a little bit more unique. So more people actually came to visit the website and maybe by this time, I've got a little bit more of a reach. We've also got more sessions, we've got more number of sessions per user. We can see that there is a significant uplift in overall page views by over 100%. We can also see that the average duration has been increased by nearly 60%. Now, once again, that's probably because the users who are visiting my website are finding it more intriguing, more unique, a little bit more different, and they're actually curious and they're spending more time on the website. And we have also reduced the bounce rate so the bounce rate is a metric defined with when someone first lands on your website, what portion of them are actually bouncing or exiting within the first few seconds because they're not interested in the website. So we've actually reduced that bounce rate by 13%, which is rounded up to 14%, which has been a significant re reduction in the bounce rate. 
In summary, the new portfolio is evidently encouraging more interest, more engagements, more inquiries. So what actually happened this time round? Now, the first thing I want to share with you is that I spent more time in being more creative again. If you have followed my journey over the last 15 years, you will notice that most of my portfolios have an underlying story behind them. There's always a narrative. For example, in 2014, when I launched my, myself as a ninja, that was the web design ninja era. Then there was the isometric era when I was simply just exploring new design techniques. And then there was the more serious Mizuko era. I made my first million dollars and I was deep in the business world. Then between 2021 and 2022 was a very pivotal time in my professional career as I left the agency world and I entered the education space. I also wanted to explore an entirely new creative direction, something I've never done before. That's when I took a photo of myself in this room, sketched it out with a 3D render of what it could look like. Then I worked with a good friend, Ben, on creating a 3D render of my studio and using it as a feature piece in my portfolio. This was also a statement to myself that I am taking a step away from the agency world and exploring an entirely new path in the education space. Branding is an entirely different ball game, and if you'd love to learn more about it, let me know in the comments below and I'll be sure to talk about it more in some upcoming videos. Now, the second thing was about being meticulous. When I first became a designer back in 2006, I was meticulous with all caps on. I spent hours iterating on the same designs and UI. I would go over my designs again and again until they really looked polished. As I became more business savvy, my priorities started to shift away from the details and more towards the strategies and the numbers. Now, this year, I really focused on bringing back the details. I wanted to make sure the UI looked polished, the spacing was consistent, the transitions worked well. When you are more meticulous with your details across an entire project, it really makes a big difference. And I genuinely believe people perceive the work differently and it really draws them in. Now, the third point is being more informative. Your portfolio is the window into who you are as a designer. If there is no story, what does it say about you? If there's no photo, what does it also say about you? If there's no content, what does that say about you? So this time around, I really focused on providing more content around my work, my story, and my mission, which I believe is why it has encouraged more discoverability, view durations, and also helped reduce the bounce rate significantly. So am I happy with where I landed with this portfolio? Yes and no. And I'll start with the yes first. I'm happy that I'm experimenting with the new way of how I am representing myself. I'm also happy with the overall feedback about the project because everyone seems to love it. But I am still a little bit conflicted on whether or not I am truly okay with representing myself with a 3D render. Now, I appreciate the creativity, but as someone who's been in business for so long, I know that representation is critical. The 3D render doesn't really come off as professional to me. Now, even though I don't think of myself wearing suits, I still think I can represent the fun side of who I am through different areas of my brand. So instead of bringing through the fun with the 3D render, I could instead use a real photo of myself and let the clothes, the pose and the props and all the background speak for itself. With that said, it could also be my personal bias and conservative point of view as a business owner. So if you have any thoughts, I would love to hear what you think. Let me know in the comments below. Now, I really do hope that you got value out of this video and you really did enjoy it. If you did, make sure to gently smash that like button, subscribe if you want more, and I will see you in the next video very soon.